Thanksgiving, of course, just over a week away. A lot of folks in the country are going to be enjoying the blessings. They got a special holiday meal planned with loved ones, but not everybody's going to have that situation, of course, George. No, that's right. According to the USDA, over 13 million households are struggling with food insecurity in the last year. And joining us now is Clara Babineau Fontenot. She's the CEO of Feeding America. That's a nonprofit network of 200 food banks and 60,000 food pantries and meal programs all across the country. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. And you know, in 2020, Claire, Fe Feeding American Network provided over 6 billion meals. We're facing the supply chain crisis now. How is that affecting your work? Well, first, George, please allow me to thank your audience. There's no way that we would have provided 6.6 .6 billion meals between last summer and this one without their generosity and support. But now to address your question directly, it's hurting us in two ways. First, we continue to rely a lot on donations from manufacturers and from retailers. If they don't have food to sell, they certainly don't have food to donate. Mm. Secondly, we're actually in the market buying food ourselves. And as you might imagine, we have a huge network that's a really sophisticated supply chain network of our own. And with freight costs up 20 percent, scarcity of products is hitting us in a lot of ways. And Unfortunately, that means that more people who need us can't rely on us in the way that they need to. Uh, you talk about, Claire, the people that uh, are going to need you, but we, we put so much emphasis, focus on uh, giving during the holiday season. But this need is there year round. Can you put in, in, in the context for us just where the need is and where it stays really uh, all year long? Yes. So I'm so glad that you said that. That's absolutely right. According to the USDA, and I think George just mentioned it, in 2020, the estimate is that 38 million people were food insecure. That means they don't have a predictable, consistent place to go where they can rely upon getting the food that they need to feed themselves and their families. That's a year-round challenge. But during the holidays, it becomes even more acute. Think about how often our holiday celebrations surround food. If you don't have food to provide for yourself and your families, I mean, it makes it particularly challenging. Think about a grandma, for instance, who wants to be able to invite her grandkids and her kids over for a meal, but she's struggling with the challenge of, can she get enough food for herself or is she gonna pay for her prescription drugs? So especially now, but always, it's important for us to reach deep and to help people, our neighbors, really. This is what community really is all about. And I'm confident that we're going to continue to provide the generosity that's necessary. And what's the biggest misconception people have about food insecurity? I think one of the misconceptions is that we think that food insecurity exists just in one place. Um, as it turns out, Feeding America, our network, covers this whole country because there is no county or parish, yes, I'm from Louisiana, that last name normally gives it away, no county or parish in this whole nation um, it exists without people inside of it who are struggling under the weight of food insecurity. That's one of them. Another is people think that in order to be food insecure, it means that you don't work. That's simply not true. The majority of people who turn to us for help, in fact, have at least one job, sometimes more than one. So these are our neighbors. They could be living right next door. There's not one face of food insecurity. Um, and it's something that I think that we as a community can do something about, which is the good news. To our audience, to people who might need some food assistance, what can you tell them and recommend and suggest uh, a ways to get help? Absolutely. Again, great question. I, one of the things that I, I strongly encourage people to do, where either you're a person who could use our help or a person who wants to help us to help neighbors, go to feedingamerica.org. There, if you go, there's a food bank locator on that website. And all that you have to do is just type in the zip code that either you live in or that you want to help. And what will pop up for you is a food bank, bank that's serving that community. Wherever you are, we're here to help. We want to partner with you. And Claire, we're trying to find ways to help here on GMA3 as well. We, a reminder to our audience, it's America's Turkey Trot. Uh, my co-anchor and I, Amy Robach and I, hosted the, uh, the Turkey Trot last year along with Women's Health and Men's Health magazine. Um, but this is something people can sign up for, be a part of taking a run uh, around the holidays, around Thanksgiving. And they are proudly supporting Feeding America. And folks, you can sign up by heading to our website. So uh, certainly we're, we're proud to be a part of it as well. Uh, but Feeding America CEO Claire Babineau uh, Fontenot, thank you so much. And we'll see you down the road, okay? Thanks for having me. Well, hey.
Hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.